Part A asks for the position of the particle at a certain point in time. This first part is easy enough because we're straight up given a formula for the particle's position depending on whatever it is in the time or t variable. All we need to do is take our x formula and plug in 3.0 seconds for t. If you put this into your calculator, 12 times 3 squared minus 2 times 3 cubed, then you should get an answer of about 54 meters. Part B asks for the velocity at some point in time, well the same point in time. Now we're not given a function for velocity, but since we have the function for position, we can find the function for velocity by using some calculus. If you take, remember, the definition of velocity is that it's the derivative of the function for position. So we just need to take this function that the problem gives us and take the derivative of it. It's a pretty simple function, so the derivative is pretty simple too. We'll just need to use the power rule here. So 12 times t squared, the derivative of that term is just, you take the 2 in the exponent and multiply it by the, by the coefficient. So that becomes 24 times t minus the derivative of 2 times t cubed. So once again, you use the power rule. So take 3 times 2 and then subtract 1 from the exponent. So that becomes 6 times t squared. So now this is our formula for velocity. To, an to actually answer part b of the problem, we'll just take 3.0 seconds and substitute it in for t. If you do this, again using your calculator, you should find that v of 3.0 seconds is equal to 18 meters per second. Part C is the same idea, except now we're being asked about acceleration rather than velocity. Now, like, we'll basically have to do the same thing we did in Part B. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So now we just need to take the formula we just found for velocity and take the derivative of that to find the formula for acceleration. Once again, we'll just have to use the power rule here. The 24t term, the derivative of that, we just drop the t, so it becomes 24, minus the derivative of 6t squared. So we just take the 2 in the exponent, multiply it by 6, and then subtract 1 from the exponent, so the 2 becomes a 1, which might as well just don't even bother writing it. So that can just be written as 12t. To solve for part C, we just plug 3.0 seconds into t for a, and again, using your calculator, you'll find that the acceleration is 12 meters per second squared. Things get a little more complicated with part D, where we're asked to find the maximum positive coordinate reached by the particle. Now, when we're talking about maximum, uh, the maxima or minima, or just extreme values in general, uh, this, is, this uses a slightly more advanced calculus technique called optimization. In a nutshell, if we want to maximize a function, so in this case we want to maximize the position function, then we need to find the spot where the derivative is equal to zero. So if we want to find the maximum value for x, we need to find out, we need to first find out when the v, the velocity function, is equal to zero. So here I've taken our formula for velocity and set it equal to zero, and we want to solve for t. We want to find out at what time velocity reaches zero, because that'll give us the time that the particle was at its maximum position. So first I've added 6t squared to both sides, so now we've got these t's on either sides, and one of the t's can be canceled out. We can now solve for t by getting the t on its own and dividing both sides of the equation by 6, which comes out to be 4 seconds. So now that we know the time at which the particle is at its maximum position, now we can put this time into our t variable for x to find out what that position actually is. So if we take our position function and then put 4 into it, 4 seconds to be exact, and you put this into your calculator, you should find that the position at this point is around 64 meters. Part E asks about the time at which this is reached, but we already found that. It was one of the preliminary steps for Part D. 
we already know that it reaches the maximum point at 4 seconds. So 4 seconds is our answer. Part F is asking something similar. Now we're looking for where the maximum velocity is reached. So we'll just use the same process. When we're optimizing a, when we're optimizing a function, we need to find the points where its derivative is equal to zero. So if we're now trying to maximize velocity, we need to find where acceleration is equal to zero. So let's take the acceleration function and set that equal to zero. And now we'll want to solve for t. So first I'll add 12t to both sides of this function. Or equation rather. And now to solve for t, we'll divide both sides by 12. And it should be pretty easy to see that t comes out to be 2 seconds. So now, in order to find the, ma the, the velocity at this point in time, we'll just plug 2 seconds into our velocity function. And this gives us 24 meters per second. Part g asks for the time at which this velocity is reached. And much like part E, this part's just kind of mindless because it was one of the preliminary steps anyway. So we'll just put down two seconds for this and call it a day. But there's still more. Now part H is asking for the acceleration of the particle at the instant the particle is not moving. Now fortunately, this part is a lot easier than it might read at first glance. When it talks about the instant the particle is not moving, that just means the time at which the velocity is zero, when it's, when it's not moving, when there's no speed, when there's no velocity, no motion. And we already found a few parts ago that this happens when t is equal to 4 seconds. So, the, so we'll just take 4 seconds, that variable, that independent variable, and put it into our acceleration formula, since this part asks for the acceleration at that point in time. So we'll take 4.0 seconds and put it into the acceleration formula, and that gives us a negative number, actually, negative 24 meters per second squared. That means that negative acceleration is happening here. Now, finally, part I asks for us to determine the average velocity of the particle between these two points in time. Now, of course, the formula for average velocity is just you take the final, the final position minus the initial position, and divide it by the change in time. So we found all the way back in part A that at t equals 3 seconds, the position is 54 meters. So we'll just, at the top of our formula here, we'll say this is 54 meters minus the position it was at at t equals 0, t equals 0 seconds, which is just going to be 0 because it hadn't moved at that point in time. And of course, we're dividing this by our difference in time. So it's 3 seconds minus well, 0 seconds. So we might as well just write 54 meters divided by 3 seconds. And if you put this into your calculator, or do it in your head if you would prefer that, then we find an average velocity of 18 meters per second. All right, so there was a lot there. But fortunately, none of the parts were too hard, uh, as long as you knew at least the basics of calculus. So I hope this video helped you a lot. If you have any questions, you uh, please, I encourage you to post a comment below. Um, I've also got a Discord server that I have a link to in the description if you'd like to ask for help. So thank you. Hope you all have a lovely day.